This video is the second video of my dad's vehicles. If you guys have been watching, you've seen his older 40s, 50s collector vehicles. My dad still owns all of the work vans that he's ever driven and used, which is pretty amazing. That's half a century of work vans that are all still here. And so this video, I'll just document each one of them and tell a little bit of the story of each of them. So starting off, this is a 1969 Dodge A100. And this is the van that he bought pretty much out of the old classified ads in the newspaper back in the early 70s. This van came from some sort of a service life. I don't know exactly what business it was as it's weathered down a little bit you can see there was something lettered on the front and you can read that a and k on the end but the other letters you just can't quite make and then on the top you can see there's some old holes where a ladder rack's been taken off and those have been filled in my dad told me when he first bought this van Someone had driven too close to something in the back and the rear bumper was peeled partly away and that whole corner of it was sticking just almost straight back. And so my dad said the first thing he did when he bought this van, he drove it home and he drove it into their front yard and he backed into a tree stump a couple times and straightened that bumper out and then he was off and going. So my dad graduated high school in 67, and he basically did antiques and collectibles. You gotta understand, my dad grew up on the Washington, D.C. area, uh, actually on the Virginia side, and so out there, out east, an antique is a hundred years older or more than what it is here in Kansas. Here in Kansas, we didn't have statehood until 1861 and really weren't settled uh, that much where like people really started to fill in until the 1870s, 1880s. So my dad would actually go up into the hill country in Pennsylvania and he would find antiques and he would bring that stuff to Washington, D.C. to sell. Pennsylvania is kind of oddly similar to Kansas. It's this big rectangle with a lot more rural and farming communities out west and then more of your bigger cities to the east. He actually had a full-time job. He worked at a medical supply house, and then for a time, he actually sold Fuller Brush products, which I think are still kind of around, but not like they were back then. And my dad had his full-time jobs, and then he did flea markets and antique furniture selling as a bit of a hobby and then pretty much once they moved to kansas in 1977 then he just started doing it full time out here and any of these businesses like antique furniture or collectibles or antique salvage like joe and i do it's all going to be really dependent on sourcing used stuff and luckily, Kansas, there's just a lot of it around. There's enough space that these old farmsteads, it just still kind of stays and collects and accumulates. And so my dad was able to do it full time out here. And my dad was very meticulous. He did good quality work. He had an eye toward authenticity. And I can remember my dad some of that wood stuff, man, if he had all the splinters, he could glue it back together. Like, that's how good my dad was. And he'd do the refinishing, and he's still got 
barns full of old cabinets and furniture and that sort of thing. And of course, any of these collectible markets change as things go along and he's edging toward retirement. So that's the story of why my dad had this van. He actually did drive it here to Kansas from Washington, D.C. in 1977. This van is very rudimentary, very under-engineered by today's standards. It's completely archaic in a mechanical sense compared to what we have today. It's straight six, it's manually operated brakes, no power brakes. You've got all flat glass. You've got really Spartan interior. Seatbelts were federally mandated in cars in 64, and I wanna say it might have been shortly after that for trucks, but this one does have seatbelts. And I can remember my dad never used the seatbelts in this van, they were greasy and they just sat piled on the floor. And I remember him getting pulled over once and he looked at them on the floor and they were down there in a greasy pile. And the officer's like, yep, go on with your day. I mean, that's just 30 years ago, the world we lived in, you know, nobody had seat belt three-point systems and airbags it was just a basic lap belt and that was what you had and these old vans i mean like your volkswagen vans i know the joke is that in a crash your feet are the first line of defense so even if you were buckled into a sardine can like this the the engineering towards safety Nobody was thinking about that in 64 when they designed these. Hey, Albert. So my dad had this van, and then he had a blue 72 Dodge pickup. And then my mom actually had her first car, which she had bought brand new, which was a 1980 Ford Fiesta. And that one was a four-speed manual. And so she was good at driving stick. She had that little Fiesta, but she just couldn't get the hang of the three on the tree. And so I can remember, you know, she hated driving this van. And there was a time where she had to drive it to work, which was about 12 or 15 miles away. And she couldn't get it shifted into second. And she made it all the way there in first gear, 12 or 15 miles. And that was the last time she ever drove it. She said, I'm going to drive my little Fiesta and nothing else. She said, this van is for you and that's it. I do remember riding in this van. So I was born in 85 and we used this van up till 1992, and that was when my dad parked it. And I can actually remember driving this van from here to Topeka, which is about 150 miles. And we went to, I believe it was called Railroad Days, and they had just a display of steam locomotives. I think there were some running. And for me, as a little five-year-old kid, it was just one of those stunning, awe-inspiring, eye-opening experiences to be confronted with this massive smoke-bellowing piece of old technology and all the reasons why people love steam trains. You know, it's just a very visceral, very awe-commanding experience that really awakens all five of your senses. And I can remember asking my parents, asking my mom, I'm not sure where dad was, but I was with mom and I asked her, what's a locomotive made out of? And she said, it's made of iron. I said, or she said, it's made of steel. And I said, what's steel made out of? She said, it's made out of iron. And I said, well, what's iron made out of? And she said, it comes out of the ground. They literally dig it out in the mines. They put the rocks in a dump truck. 
they smashed the rocks and they smelt it down and it's made of iron. And I, I just remember as a five-year-old kid, that experience of hearing like these things that we use, like it literally comes out of the ground and man turns it into this smoke bellowing behemoth. And I think forever after that, like I was hooked on technology, like that was it for me. These vehicles have a very Spartan interior. I mean, it's just a steering wheel, a plain metal dashboard, and that's it. There's no radio. Of course, these, any of these 60s vans, your Chevys, your Dodges, your Econolines, they've got that big engine doghouse in the center. And of course, the heaters are terrible. They don't have a great top speed. You're just kind of bumbling along driving one and the experience driving one of these is a lot different from a regular vehicle because you are literally over the front wheels almost ahead of them the steering wheel is ahead of the front wheels and the experience of driving it like the first time when you're not used to it it's something you just have to wrap your head around so I can remember my sister and I, when we were still toddlers, we would both fit on top of the engine cover, the doghouse inside there, on a blanket, and we would actually sleep there while my parents were driving. And I just remember, like, to us, there wasn't this idea of airbags and seat belts and all that stuff and looking back yeah it's terribly dangerous and of course we're all still still here we lived through it but it's just the type of thing that back then it wasn't really on people's minds the way it is now this was my dad's pretty much second work van so the old white dodge I think was last tagged like 92 and there was a bit of a gap where he looked and waited to find the right one and that was this van it's a 82 Dodge this I believe is a elk conversion I think that was Elkhart Indiana don't quote me on that but this van was pretty nice when we got it we bought it in 1994 out of a classified in the newspaper before Craigslist days, before Facebook Marketplace. Newspaper was where you bought vehicles and paid 3500 for it. This one was intended as a bit of a hybrid family and work vehicle and had the removable sofa bed in the back, and then it had the four captain's chairs that are actual flex steel brand. The sofa in the back was only in there for special trips. I remember taking this thing out to Colorado with our cousins to go skiing, and most of the time it was used for hauling furniture and stuff around. My dad did antique furniture restoration and he was pretty big into auctions in the area around that time. We bought it with pretty low mileage. It was maybe 50, 60,000. And we drove it all the way to 67,996. So that was 167, of course. And, you know, close to 170,000 on one of these is getting up there. Engine was pretty tired. Transmission was starting to hammer in reverse. And it was just kind of one of those that had outlived its useful life. We parked it in 2010 graduated college from McPherson in 2008 and so the last couple of years of this van's life my dad transferred ownership to me and this was my primary tow vehicle work vehicle 
all the way through the end of 2010. And so this is a little bit of a blend and a hybrid footage for this video. I'll probably put this excerpt in my dad's work van video as well as my work vehicle video. Just have so many memories of this van growing up in it, doing stuff with my dad in it, doing my work with it. Once I got it, we kind of gutted out some of it in the back, but there's still a lot of the paneling and stuff there. Have memories of working on this van, taking it places. My dad started to first go to old car auctions with me take me along I could probably shoot a whole video just on this van but don't want to bore you guys to death There's, oh yeah the old cassette tapes in there so here's yeah it was Elk Enterprises Elkhart Indiana I remember on the visor there's a such a funny mirror. What's a nice face like yours doing in a place like this? <laughs> I always found that amusing. And, oh man, here's my uh, copy of How to Be Rich. J. Paul Getty. Chapter 1, Don't Have Old Cars as Your Hobby. Dad actually bought a second one of these vans uh, shortly after, I believe it was about 96 or 97, that was pretty identical, but it wasn't a conversion van. And that one, he basically just left in the shed and stored it. And then once this 82 was kind of worn out and decommissioned, I did end up using several of the parts off of it, so that's why you see it kind of taken apart here a little bit mechanically in some of the body pieces. And then I started driving that 83. So just shortly after my dad bought the 82 in 1994, he had some jobs and stuff that were just kind of rougher, nastier, and he'd paid 3,500 bucks for that 82, which was a lot of money at the time, and he wanted something rougher that he could haul trash to the dump and do kind of more mud road trips and things that weren't going to tear up that 82 since it was kind of purchased more as a family vehicle. And so he bought this red van, which is a 79. I want to say it was about 96 that we got this one. And pretty basic van, 318. We got this one on the Conklin Cars used car lot before they became the big you know, household name. It was just a little dealership there in Newton. And my dad paid 500 bucks for this van, running, driving. And that's just something that you could never do today. First of all, buy a driver vehicle for 500 bucks. And second of all, get one from a new car dealer that they had back on the back lot. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, it was a, a different place, a different time. And they had an old trade-in. They didn't wholesale them. They didn't take them to auction. They didn't just take them to the scrapyard or whatever. They actually sold them as running vehicles. And so there was my dad with 500 bucks in hand and bought this van and we drove it, I want to say, till about 05, 06. And it had started to have transmission trouble only on occasion. Like, you'd drive it, and sometimes if it was cold, it would just hesitate to shift. 
and it gradually became a little harder to start and then there was one day that it just wouldn't start and I think it's still cranked over but I just don't really remember I had come home from college and I wasn't super mechanical at the time still wouldn't necessarily call myself super mechanical but I worked on the thing and just kind of gave up on it you can see I did take the bumpers off of it and there's just a few pieces probably over the years that I grabbed and robbed to keep the other two going. One thing we did do, I remember it was 2001, it was my freshman year of high school, we used this van as scaffolding to roof my dad's rental house and which was my old granddad's house after he passed and we kept it in the inheritance but you can see the top of the roof there is kind of buckled and pounded down because we walked across it we just backed it around the house and wherever we went is where we climbed up on top and did the shingle job this one, I don't remember. I want to say it was like 141,000 miles that it had before it just quit running. And when we got it, pretty much had all the rust and all the dents. We had the awareness and the understanding that it was a rusty vehicle. And the guy that had it before us, he had driven into a fence post and scarred the door. And it was always a beater. It was bought to be a beater. And so one of the kind of funny running jokes we had was after, I want to say the Red Green Show started in like 98. And then they put it on PBS in the early 2000s there. And so we always called this the possum van for obvious reason. Right at the time I graduated college and my dad transferred ownership of the Tan 82 Dodge to me, there was an auction where this 81 GMC was sold. And at the time, these didn't really have collector value and there wasn't really anybody else at the sale that was interested in it. And I think my dad got this van for like 300 bucks or 400 bucks and he drove it not super super long we actually used it mainly just for hauling not for towing it had a 305 and it probably would have done okay towing i just used little trailers with it i never actually towed the car trailer with it that i remember at least not to put vehicles on it maybe to load lumber and stuff I kind of liked this fan. It had power windows and they were excellent. They were the quickest up and down power windows of any van I ever had or vehicle. It started great, it ran great, it drove great. And about the time after I'd graduated college, I was starting to move and do things. And I remember one of the vehicles that we were moving from my dad's farm over to the shop I backed in to pull it out and this old GMC wouldn't back up anymore so everything else worked great you could take it down the highway no problem and so this van we actually drove for quite a while probably at least a year or more with the bad transmission and it was actually kind of fun you know, if you were going to park somewhere in town, you'd just park in a spot that you could pull through. Or if you were on like Main Street, you'd just park at the end of the block so you could pull away. And, you know, it was maybe two, three blocks at the most you'd have to walk. And we actually got quite a bit more mileage out of this van than the average person would have. And actually, when I moved to my shop, bought the building, I bought out a Monroe shock dealer, and there were two many storage garages totally full of shocks that I bought. 
and actually ended up using this van to get them all home. And what I would do is I'd load it about two foot tall in the inside, which is about half or so of the volume. And as I was loading the shocks, I'd just kind of watch. And when it would hit the snubbers, the little rubber blocks there on the rear axle, then just when they'd start to touch, I'd shut the doors and take it in and unload it. And I could just get around that many storage. There was a little hill I'd shift into neutral and it would roll down. And then I'd drive it into the shop, unload the shocks, and we'd pull it out with a chain and I'd go get another load. And I want to say it was about 10 or 11 or a dozen loads that we got. And then after that, we just didn't have any real reason to use it. And I had recommissioned the 83 Dodge van, the brown one. And so we parked this old GMC. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, I can't explain it, but I have had the worst luck you could imagine with 305 Chevy V8s. They just lock up for no reason. And so this one, I put a bar on it, been sitting 10 years, locked up. I've had them lock up, you know, after only sitting two, three years. So not my favorite engine at all. I wouldn't probably walk across the street for one for free if you gave it to me. So this van, realistically, probably parts. I mean, it's not real rusty. It is a long chassis. It's got the windows cut in it. If it was a short van without the windows, I think there'd definitely be guys beating down the doors to restore it. Because these old vans really are starting to take off now in popularity. But a long van with a bad motor, bad transmission, that's had the conversion windows cut in it. Just not really ready to see its day yet, but who knows. So after my dad transferred ownership of the Tan 82 Dodge van to me, in 08, he kind of got by with the uh, minivans and this was our Pontiac Transport. We ran around in this thing. I'd kind of borrow it interchangeably occasionally, but mostly my parents drove it. And so for 20, 08, 09, 10, 11, about those four years, my dad only drove minivans. In 2012, this van popped up on an auction I believe it's a 98 and it's got the Vortec 350 V8 and my dad scored a sweet deal on this van of 800 bucks and when we got it it really didn't need a whole lot uh, I think I topped up the transmission fluid and we just drove it I don't ever remember there being any major maintenance issues with it and I don't know what the mileage was when we got it, maybe 160 or something like that. The people that we'd gotten it from actually were using it to deliver newspapers. And we drove it around. I mean, this van against those 80s Dodge vans was an absolute night and day. I mean, this van had a hot heater, it would go interstate speeds with a trailer, and you wouldn't even know it was back there. Those old half-ton Dodges with the five-lug half-ton suspension, you know, the 15-inch 35 PSI tires, you just, you could work, on, work with them, you could load them down, but you knew you were just always pushing them to the edge of their limits. And this 98, it's a version of essentially a three quarter ton van, but it has six lug wheels, but it's pretty much a three quarter ton. We always kind of joked and called it a five eighths ton. 
not a lot of people know, but Ford in the late 90s, they did like a seven lug three quarter ton truck. And those things, we always joked and called them 11 16 ton. But this old van, it ran around really, really well. I mean, we got probably 260, 70,000 miles out of it, maybe. And everybody rags on the 4L60, but it was a great transmission. The only thing that took it out was one of the rubber cooler lines got a split in it and dumped the fluid and overheated the trans and cooked it. But aside from that, there wasn't anything fundamentally wrong with it. So this is my dad's very last work van. This one, I believe is 2008. And you put this against any of the old ones, the 69, the 79, the 82, the 81 GMC, and even that 1998 with the Vortec 350. And this van is just night and day. It's extended. It'll haul everything you want to put in it. It's a 6 liter LS engine. And I've pulled this van with Joe's two-car trailer and two heavy full-size sedans on it all the way to North Dakota to Colorado, and it just doesn't miss a beat. Uh, this van my dad got at an auction for 4000 with 350,000 miles on it. And it's just the type of thing at that mileage, nothing to be scared of. It was always fleet maintained. It had, I think, a leaking transmission output seal was all I could find on it when I went over it. And other than that, it was ready to go. And the times that I've borrowed this van and used it, I've probably slept 20 nights in it on trips on the warmer months away when I go out and film. And so if I sleep 20 more nights in this at a hundred bucks a night for motel rooms, like this van will pay for itself just as a four wheeled lodge. And it's just a world apart of any of those other vans. Like all the old vans, the AC never worked on. This one, you can, flip the switch and it'll freeze you out. It's got big 16 inch 80 PSI transport truck tires on it. And you just look at this against the old ones and there is no comparison. My dad drove this van until the engine just got tired and probably quit running, needed a rebuild. Might have been using oil, smoking, who knows. But for whatever reason, he parked it. My dad was pretty handy, like he was able to get by mechanically, but he just didn't go in elbows deep, if you know what I mean. You know, he could do brake jobs, he could do pretty much external work on engines, but much more than that, he was just about kind of in over his head so he parked the van it was a 92 and it sat in our yard we kind of used it for storage and i almost started parting this van out and then i realized like all the other vehicles we drove we we drove junky old used up cars and that was just what we had around my parents old ford fiesta we drove it till it was a junkie car. I think we got 18 years out of it. And that was just the frugal mindset that my parents have. And it was passed on to me. And so this thing sat in the yard. I almost parted it out. And then I bought a parts car that was like a 67, 68 Valiant. A guy had given up the restoration and it had had actually a rebuilt slant six and automatic transmission. And I was like, man, I need to save that drivetrain. 
to put in this van. And so pending getting time, and that's, again, a goal that I have for next year that I've talked about in some of those other videos. Like, I need to be able to work on some of my dad's vehicles, and this is one that is worthy of doing a restoration on and worthy of getting back on the road. And kind of a cool thing about it would be like my mom would be able to theoretically drive it with the automatic, which I think in some way would be pretty satisfying to see.